Hello! I'm going to show you how to scale your previous animations to fit the new canvas size that we have. So here I'm in the project vault. I'm going to pick a flipbookish and get in there. And I see that my animation is up in this upper left corner, but I want to move it. So I'm going to grab the select tool and drag over the whole animation or the whole drawing and use that corner to make it bigger and then place it where I want it to go. And this is just in the first frame. So in the second frame, I'm going to need to do the same thing. And you'll notice that I've got the trace button clicked on so I can see my previous frame here and that's going to make it a lot easier. So when I use the select tool and I change the size, I can compare it to the previous frame and I can try to make her the same size and then I can line her up. So each time I'm going to be doing that, I'm going to make sure that I drag over everything in my drawing, then use that corner to make it bigger and then drag it to the right place. First, I want to check and make sure that she's the right size. Looks pretty good. And then here in my fourth frame, same thing. Each time I can use that onion skin to check to see if I like the size and compare it so it looks consistent throughout and then I can place it where I want it to go. And so now I've got that same animation but it's a little bit bigger. It fits on this canvas so I can add more to it if I want or if I export it, it will be at its largest possible size. Now, I might also want to do this in advanced dish, and that could get a little tricky if you have a background. So here I have clicked into the background frame, and I'm just going to do the same thing. Take that select tool, drag the corner, and then place it where I want it to go. Now these are all added exposures. I only need to do this where it's a new frame. So I'll only have to do it a couple of times here because I've got some added exposures. And each time just dragging the corner and placing it where I want it to go. And so now I've finished the background and I'm going to go to the foreground layer. Now because I have a background, the foreground's a little trickier here. I am not going to be able to see the onion skin. So when I drag over this and make it larger by dragging the corner, I'm not going to be able to see the placement as compared to the previous frame without just clicking to the previous frame quickly. And so each time I'm going to make it a little larger, I'm going to place it, and then I'm going to check and make sure that it's the right size and the right position compared to the previous frame by clicking on that previous frame and just looking. That looks pretty good. Oh, well, it looks a little small there. So I'm going to make it a little bit larger, move it down, and that looks better. So this is a little bit trickier, but it's something that animators often have to do, you know, kind of going back, making little changes at a time, comparing uh, to previous frames. And because this background is very simple, I could instead decide just to delete the background and use that onion skin feature to uh, fix the foreground. And then I can go back and add the background. You might not want to do that if you've put a lot of stuff in the background or if there's a lot of movement in the background. If you have a, a very detailed background that doesn't move, you might want to delete all but one frame and then later go back and add the exposure. Um, or if you do have a lot going on in your background, uh, you might need to do it this way. And that is also possible. So each time I'm just making little tweaks as I compare it to the frame before. And so we're going to just kind of zip through this. And so now I've got my animation and it fills up the screen 
And the benefit of this is that when I export, it's going to be a higher resolution, it's going to look better, and um, I've got this nice big canvas that I can work on now for any changes in the future.